So our ultimate goal is to be able to use Q and K in a useful way. In other words, we want to be able to use those values to determine which way our reaction will proceed. Remember that this means that we have some kind of reaction that can go in both directions. It can proceed towards the reactants and towards the products. So the question is, which way is it going to proceed? Am I making more products or am I consuming my products? One way to do that is to compare Q to K, the values of Q and K, I mean. Remember that the Q is going to tell us about our initial concentration. So this is telling us where we're starting. The K tells us about our equilibrium concentration. So that's the concentration at the end. So our question becomes, how do we get from the start to the end? Are we going in this direction and we need to produce more products to get to that end equilibrium concentration? Or do we have too much product and we need to go back to the reactants? Ultimately, our question is, how does Q need to change in order to get to K? Or do we need to make Q bigger or make Q smaller? And then once we know that, we can figure out, okay, well, what needs to happen in order for Q to get bigger or smaller, depending on what, needs, um, what those values are. I like to think about it in terms of product. So I like to think, should the products be increased or should they be decreased? So let's think about each of these scenarios. What if Q is greater than K? Remember again that Q is products over reactants. So is K. So if my Q is bigger than K, then that means I have a lot of products or I have too few reactants. That means that my numerator here is too big. I have too much product and not enough reactant. So if I have too much product, I need to consume some of that product. And by consuming it, I will produce more reactant. This means that the reactant reaction needs to go in this reverse direction. It needs to shift back towards the reactants. It needs to go in the reverse direction. If Q equals K, then I am at equilibrium. That means that no change is needed. I'm just already there. If Q is smaller than K, then that means that my products are really small or my reactants are really large. Either way, it means that my numerator is too small and I don't have enough of my product. If I don't have enough product, I need to make more of it. So I need to shift back towards my products. This means that my reaction needs to proceed in the forward direction. This is the way I need to be primarily going. Over here, my reaction is gonna to need to shift back towards my reactants primarily. We can think of this visually too, right? So if um, my Q is smaller than my K, then I need to build this Q up, right? I need to make this bigger so that it matches my K. If my Q is bigger than my K, then I need to shrink this Q down so that it matches my K. If I'm building the Q up, then my reactants need to be converted into products. My reaction is going to go in the forward direction. So if Q needs to get bigger, then my products need to get bigger. But when Q needs to get smaller, that means I need to consume my products. The reaction is going to go in the reverse direction so that my Q can get smaller. That's why I like to think about it in terms of products, because products are going to do whatever we need to do with our Q. If we need to increase Q, that means where our products should increase. If we need to decrease Q, that means our products should decrease. Let's look at some examples and calculate these and kind of put this into action. So this um, reaction is given to us and they gave us what our K value is. Notice our K values never have units. It's just a proportion. So there's no units on this large K, the capital K. It's asking us to determine which direction the reaction will proceed in each of these experiments. 
So in each experiment, we've got a different set of concentrations and we need to determine, we're gonna go forward, or are we gonna go in the reverse react, um, direction? Just anytime we're doing this, we always just wanna go ahead and write our expression so that we can plug in correctly. Sometimes if we don't do this, we will forget a coefficient or something or an exponent, and then our whole problem is messed up. So this is always the way we want to start any of these problems. It's just by writing our expression. And if we know the value, then we'll put the value there too. So our K value is 0.64. We're going to need to remember that. Remember Q and K, really, we plug them in the same way. So let's start with experiment one. In experiment one, our Q will be equal to the concentration of carbon dioxide times the concentration of hydrogen divided by our concentration of carbon monoxide times our concentration of water. Our Q is 0 0.0004. Well, it's really 0 0.00039. We should keep our sig figs. So our Q is much less than K, right? If our Q is less than K, then remember, if our Q is too small, then our products are also too small. We need to increase our products. So when Q is less than K, we need to increase products. So our reaction is going to shift towards products, or we could say it's going to um, favor the forward reaction. In experiment two, our Q is set up the same way, but this time we're just using these numbers over here. So it's still our carbon dioxide times our hydrogen over carbon monoxide times water. Here our Q is 140. So now our Q is much greater than K. Remember that if our Q is too big, then our products are also too big. We have too many products. So therefore we need to decrease our products and we're gonna shift back towards our reactants. Or in other words, we're gonna favor the reverse reaction. Finally, in experiment three, our Q, we set it up the same way, right? So we're going to start with our carbon dioxide times our hydrogen gas over our carbon monoxide times our water. We put that in our calculator. I think we get 0 0.48. So again, our Q is smaller than K because K is 0.64. So therefore, we need to increase our products and shift towards with the reaction. I mean the reactant, sorry. 
So this is how we can use our Q and K values to help us predict what's actually going to happen with the reaction before we just let it go. So that we're making sure we're getting what we really want to out of our reaction. So our Q values we're getting from here, this is what we're starting with. This is what we're putting in our flask or beaker or whatever, right? We're putting these things in and we know that they're going to react so that we get this value out. Their proportion will come to this value as long as we stay at this temperature. So that's what's happening here. We're putting in our initial concentrations and then we're looking to see, okay, well, which way do they have to shift so that their proportional um, concentrations come out to be the value of K. And here's just a summary. Remember that when Q is bigger than K, we have too many products. So we're going to shift towards reactants and favor the reverse reaction. If these two values are equal, then we're at equilibrium. So there'd be no shift. However, if the Q is smaller than K, then we don't have enough products. So we're going to have to make more sh by shifting towards the products and favoring the, re uh, the forward reaction. It's going to be important that you memorize this so that you can apply it. This is not going to be on your formula sheet or anything. You're going to have to know what happens when Q is too big or too small or equal to K. So be sure you commit this to memory in some way.